She's what I call an exotic beauty. Well, that's one way to put it. Hey, every animal's the most beautiful thing in the world to someone. Yeah, you're right. Oof, I don't know about you, but I go weak in the knees for stripes. Please, Marty, I don't want to know. And I don't care. Keep it to yourself. And let's get out of here quickly. <laughs> Can't I even talk to you anymore? You can. Ask about the weather, or how's my lower back. Those two are even connected, if you want to know. Yeah, old fart. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would you be so kind as to help me? With pleasure, ma'am. The zipper always comes down on my dress. Would you kindly zip it back up? Can I, Sonny? What am I, your mother? Do what you want, for God's sake. Happy to help, ma'am. Oh, what a gallant young man. Clucking lords. Oh, I'm sorry. If you'd really like to. I will be, ma'am. I'm sorry. If you'd I will be. Oh, I'm if you'd I will be. <laughs> oh, thank you, honey. Marty, ma'am. Marty McChicken. Thank you, darling Marty. I'm much obliged. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime. May I invite you gentlemen for a drink, perhaps? No, thank you. We're in a hurry. Oh. Beauty is relative. Yeesh. That guy's stare gives me the creeps. Eh, uh, I can see why. I've always told myself that birds are weird. What did you just say? Huh? What? Me? Nothing. Holy fur. You swallowed so hard, the whole place shook. Are you kidding me? I've never seen anything like this before. Is this even legal? Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Vice? You really must be joking. Vice in Clawville? Uh, okay, okay, I was pulling your leg. But still, it's a little hot in here. Now well, cool down, Marty. Don't even look over there. Remember Laura, your wonderful girlfriend, whom you love more than anything. You don't need to tell me. All I'm thinking about is her. With a hatchet in her hand. More like my nuggets. <laughs> That's... <laughs> uh. Laura, 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 Laura. That's it, Marty. Just slowly turn away from the pictures. Laura, Laura, Laura. That's it. Don't even know. Good gods! Hey, keep it down, Marty. I see it now. Of all that's furry. Yes, it's very furry. Or more like, uh, shaggy. I think she must be the receptionist. Bravo, Mr. Detective. Why do you have to be like that all the time? Well, sometimes I seriously can't decide if you've become totally stupid over the years, or it just entertains you to act that way. Well, you know, that's a good question. That's exactly what I mean. My name is Day-Night Diamond. Welcome to the Sweltering Nile, gentlemen. Miss Diamond, 
I'm Sonny, and this is my partner, Marty. If I may, miss, you have a beautiful name and exceptionally wonderful stripes. Marty, not now. Oh, thank you very much. Please excuse him. He doesn't visit places like this very often. Uh, me neither, uh, to be honest. Oh, nothing to worry about, gentlemen. There's a first time for everyone. You're absolutely right. We're just interested in a certain lady called Deborah. Deborah? We don't have any employees by that name right now, but if you want, any of our girls would love to be Deborah for a night. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, excuse me, you misunderstand. Uh, she doesn't work here. I'm afraid I don't follow. It's kind of confusing, but let me try to explain. Please, I'm at your service. I'll gladly answer any of your questions. You hear that, Sonny? Any questions? Shut up, Marty. I wouldn't want to offend you. Far from it, but it's evident you're from the police, even without this. Is it that obvious? No, it isn't, but, you know... Here in the Nile, we have a keen eye for this kind of thing. Right. I understand, ma'am. Do you know a gentleman named Louis C. Hayworth? Of course I do. Mr. Hayworth is a regular guest at our establishment. I see. Uh, how regular, if I may ask? I can't give you any information about that. We have that, too. It's called the law, ma'am. Mm. If you have any questions of that nature, Please, come back with a warrant. Ah, touché. Does this list mean anything to you? This? I'm not sure. No, nothing. Don't you see some familiar names on there? I do, but everybody knows those animals. Personally, I have no contact with any of them. I see. Oh, thank you. Look, she gave this to us. The girl named Deborah, the one we uh, asked you about. I see. Do you know what this is? Of course. It's a membership card. Was this person a regular here? If this belonged to her, then yes. I can check for you. Please, the ladies will entertain you while you wait. I'll be right back. Uh, thank you. I'm much obliged. Brides are elegant, just like Laszlo said. Lewis. What do you think could be the old rabbit's type? Fluffy tails, furry ears, a raspy tongue? Oh, for the love of all the gods, stop it. But just think about it. Please shut up, Marty. How young is this girl? Damn. This place is clucked up. Do you think... They're forced to do this. Marty, we're not here for that. Just for the information we need. Yeah, but... You know what, Sonny? We're fortunate to be able to choose what we do with our lives, huh? You are, Marty. You have the chance to work with Santino Featherland. Me, on the other hand... Aha. Uh -huh. That woman... She's familiar. Do you think it's her? The broad from the Bloody New Year's? God damn it, Marty, do you have to say it out loud? It gives me goosebumps. Chicken bumps more like. Anyway, I don't know if it's really her. I always get confused by the exotic ones, but yeah, maybe. Honestly, it gives me the creeps. Yeah, me too.
I apologize for the wait. Please, come with me, gentlemen. So you were successful? My mistress, Madame Zavas, would like to meet you. You mean that, Madame Zavas? As far as I know, there's only one of her, so... yes. Please, miss, take us to her. With pleasure. Madame Zavas was a legend in Clawville. Her name was known all over the wilderness. She's an avid royalist, former member of the Council of Twelve, spy master, assassin, businesswoman, and courtesan. To be honest, I didn't even know she was still alive. She's no spring chicken, that's for sure. She could also be my mother, or maybe my grandmother. First Ibn Wessler, now her. Honestly, tonight it wouldn't surprise me if His Majesty Hector III didn't grace me with his presence. Interesting pieces. Do you think so? It's the art of my people. Uh, crocodiles? There are many kinds of crocodile in the wilderness, Mr. Featherland. Ah, hence the name, the Sweltering Nile. It's a river, Mr. Featherland. My ancestors lived by this river a long time ago. Ah, huh, interesting. Thank you. Is that the time already? Have you noticed your clock's not working? How observant you are. That clock isn't meant to show the time, it's a decoration. A memento. It's beautiful. Indeed. There are books here on quite a variety of topics. That's quite a wide range of interests. There are books here. There are books here. What a painting! Congratulations, ma'am. Marty. Yes. It's beautiful indeed. <laughs> it's more than 40 years old. You know, I was considered pretty then. Oh, don't say that. You still look great, ma'am. Thank you. It feels good, but no. There's no need for lies. Those days are long gone. Every age has its truth and its beauty. For me, beauty is not in the looks anymore. I agree, ma'am. So she is the legendary Madame Zavas. Let me introduce myself properly, ma'am. Mr. Zadino, I know who you are, and I also know your partner. The legend of the chicken police is always one step ahead of the chicken police. Uh, thank you. That's flattering. Hmm. May I ask what you are looking for exactly, here on this night? You know, that's an interesting question. The card we've shown your lovely colleague... ...belongs to an old friend of ours, whom we haven't seen for a long time here. And the name? Unfortunately, no, Mr. Santino. That's confidential information. In my line of work, discretion is everything. Well, you know, in our line of work, the law is above everything. Oh, do you think so? I could tell you what your colleagues think is also above everything, but, as I said, discretion. Look, ma'am, we don't want to impose. We're conducting a private investigation, which started off as harmless, but now it's murder. That sounds serious. It is serious. That's why we'd be grateful for your help. In that case, I'm at your service. Ask your questions, and I'm going to answer to the best of my knowledge. As long as you're not wading through muddy waters. Fortunately, I swim very well for a chicken. 
I swim well, too. As I was saying, it belongs to us. Only our most valuable guests have one of these. And our employees, of course. The employees, too. Good to know. Can you tell me if this card belonged to a guest or an employee? No. I thought so. Yes, thank you. Lewis Hayworth is a good friend of mine. It uh, surprises me that he's a regular here. You wouldn't believe our clientele. You would be shocked. No doubt. Lewis, uh, does he come here often? Mm, not so often. Thank you for the vague answer, ma'am. The mystery is thrilling. The thrill is life itself. That was beautiful, ma'am. Tell me, have you ever seen this list? I have. Am I right to assume it has something to do with the sweltering Nile? It does, yes. But I can't tell you more about it. No. Discretion is key. Absolutely. Do you know Natasha Katsenko personally? Yes, I do. Tell me about her. Warm-hearted. Protected. Quick-tempered, fierce, yes, fierce. Thank you, very useful. This place isn't just our home with the girls. It's a sanctuary. Really? How? It symbolizes why the city was founded almost a thousand years ago. Unity, love, Freedom. Interbreeding? That too, yes. Do you have a problem with that? Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't. My girlfriend's a predator. Really? I'm glad to hear it. Deceit is everything to save us. She used to be a spy, so I'm gonna take her every word with a grain of salt. Who's behind the legend, Miss Zavos? Who are you, really? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Featherland. And because I've been taught, I know how to survive. I always was what I had to be. And you managed to dodge my question. Clever. Well, you see, this is one of the typical elements of survival. The way of dodging a delicate question and still making the questioner believe he got the answer. <laughs> but you're too cunning and experienced, aren't you? <laughs> you're not an easy one to fool. I'm trying to maintain appearances, ma'am. You should. Appearances, most of the time, are stronger and more dangerous than the truth.
Isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? You know, Mr. Featherland, those that are genuinely dedicated never care about danger. That's something you must know even better than I. Do you think it's my loyalty that motivates me the most? If you do, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Maybe you're not loyal to the police, Mr. Featherland, but you are to your own principles and ideals. Am I right? That's true, but you're avoiding the question. Why did you stay in the King's employment after the scandals that are making half the city riot? What makes you still believe so much in the institution of monarchy? You know, I always adapt, but only to a degree where I still don't have to give up myself and my ideals for the sake of survival. You'd rather die then? Maybe it would seem too dramatic or even romantic to you, but yes, exactly. I'm sorry to doubt you, but I've always thought your kind was rather compromised. Do you mean spies or crocodiles? Spies, of course. <laughs> I must disappoint you. But there aren't many groups as loyal and unwavering as the spies, Mr. Featherland. If you're telling me, ma'am, I believe you. What is the sweltering Nile? Is it really just a luxury brothel? First of all, it's what it looks like. Luxurious relaxation with the luxurious ladies and gentlemen. For wealthy ladies and gentlemen with luxurious needs. And under the surface? If you're insinuating that my girls are kind of spies, you're on the wrong track. On a very long track, to be precise. Don't they have confidential information on almost all the wealthy bachelors of Clawville? Bachelors? <laughs> Don't be naive. Almost exclusively married men visit here. Well, then my question is even more valid. Of course, they know much. Many visit here who don't care about sex, Mr. Featherland. Some come here to talk. And meanwhile, they inadvertently say a lot about themselves. Which makes them easy targets for blackmail, right? It could, yes. But even the assumption is offensive. If I guess who the card belongs to, will you tell me? I wouldn't say that's an acceptable price for such a secret as this, but... If you guess right, I won't lie to you. Then, I will tell you you were right. Yes. Good. Let's see. The answer to my question, Natasha Katsenko. Well, Mr. Featherland, it seems the gossip about you is right. What gave it away? It couldn't have been easier. There's a beautiful woman with a mysterious past, trying to keep it a secret while someone's threatening her with the exact same thing, leaving rather unmistakable messages behind. Plus, we found the card on Deborah, who was her best friend and confidant, so she was either trying to hide it or destroy it forever, so no one could find out the truth. Am I right so far? Indeed, Mr. Featherland. So if I'm not mistaken, Natasha used to work for you before she met Ibn Wessler. He fell in love with her, gave her a job at the Millions Club. The rest is history. You have talent, Mr. Featherland. I'm really sorry you're not working for the government. I am working for the government. I'm a cop. Are you sure, Mr. Featherland? Touché. Indeed. Natasha used to work here. We can put it that way, but you know, this isn't just a workplace. She also lived here. She was part of our family. And we still love her very much. Right. That puts everything in a different light. Save Us is a true survivor, always was. And she's proud of that, even to this day. 
Maybe I can get her to trust me if I play to this part of her. Everyone in this city thinks you're dangerous. Why is that? There are many legends in the city about many things, Mr. Featherland. I, for one, have heard that you too had solved all your cases. Is that true? You know it's not. Uh, I hear things. The truth comes out when we come face to face with it. So? There's one case we never solved. Though the press said otherwise, thanks to political pressure. Fascinating. And you see how much easier it is now that you've said it. You managed to dodge my question again. You're very good at that. My answer is maybe. Maybe I am dangerous. But only if someone stands between me and my goals. Which are? Uh, I'm an old woman now, Mr. Featherland. I care for nothing except the well-being of my girls. Excuse me, but I can't believe that. You're capable of anything to keep your secrets hidden, am I right? Do you mean like sending obscene threats to Natasha to remind her of her sordid past? So you know about the threats? Of course I do. Who do you think Natasha came to for help first? You, perhaps? Please, don't make me laugh. If you want to know, I wasn't even her second choice. Even Mr. Phil Marlowe entered the picture earlier than me. Should I tell you I'm sorry to hear that? Don't bother. Do you know where Natasha came from before Clawville? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. Even her name's eloquent, her accent, but mostly her manners, Mr. Featherland. She's from Stovos, and she belonged to the upper class of Stavonian social circles. She could barely even speak the language when I first met her. That's all you know about her. An ex-spy like you must have checked up on her new protege's past. That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my most treasured connections to good use. But nobody found anything. Natasha's trail could only be traced back to the Stovonian border. What happened in that country, no one knows. It's rather curious, don't you think? It is, Mr. Featherland. Yes, curious. That's why I've always been... Rather fond of Natasha. Did it touch you deeply when she left you? Indeed, it did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her whole life to her protégés. If I concentrate on that, maybe she'll open up to me. Why did you let her leave with Wessler? What else could I have done? Wessler is a handsome, rich, powerful animal, and Natasha fell in love with him. If anything, I know you can't stand in the way of a woman in love. 
There's nothing more dangerous, Mr. Featherland. I've been in this job for more than 20 years, but I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> you see? You learn something new every day if you have an open mind. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you saw her, Madame Zavos? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball, attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant, she was in love. Yes in her own unique way. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange, it was that I saw a woman positively floating above the ground, who previously used to stand on it with two feet. I see. Thank you, madam. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly, I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? Deceit is it? Who's behind the just an and you may well, I'm trying you should isn't it dangerous being a royalist nowadays? You know, Mr. Featherland, those that are genuinely dedicated never care about danger. That's something you must know even better than I. Do you think it's my loyalty that motivates me the most? If you do, I'm that's true, but you're avoiding the question deceit. Who's behind? Just an animal raised to survive, Mr. Fett. And you... Well, I'm... Tr you should. Tell me, were you... If that's such an open secret, then I haven't been doing my job very well, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, I was a spy. But that's such a blunt way of putting it. I always say I used to undertake confidential, generally political assignments of a delicate nature for the king that were in the interests of national security. Put that way, it sounds rather romantic. Don't believe the cheap fiction, Mr. Featherland. Espionage is anything but romantic. I believe you, madam. If you must know, I only did it because I believed I could protect those that I serve. Weapons have only one use in this world. To keep the peace. Yes. I always thought about myself and my craft that way. Thank you for your honesty, ma'am. Why did you decide to open a brothel? You know, this place used to be an orphanage. Then after the great avian plague, a hatchery. Then, young mothers lived here who had nowhere else to go. That's when I took over. Young mothers and prostitutes. That feels like a sharp turn. No, it didn't happen like that, of course. The process took 20 years, but one thing remains the same. I wanted to help girls who had nothing and no one. And this was the best you could do, helping them sell their bodies. You see things very superficially, Mr. Featherland. We're a family who helped each other even at the worst of times, took care of each other, and what's most important, survived. Yet and it's the cherry on top of the most treasured secrets of the rich and famous. Very insightful, Mr. Featherland. There's truth to that. Knowledge is power, as they say. And we know a lot about powerful animals that could be used as weapons. Or the opposite. <laughs> that could avert a war. 
If I guess who the card belongs, I wouldn't do it. Well, it couldn't. Indeed. So it, you have. I am. I you do shit. Indeed. Right. Save us as a true. You tried to protect her. From what? Haven't you seen any opportunities for profit? Or were you guided by pure animal goodness? Is that so hard for you to believe? I think that uh, worldly women like you try to turn every position to their advantage. I On the contrary. <laughs> but no. I didn't see any opportunities in a girl who could barely speak our language, who was starving and wounded and obviously running from something. In fact, I was taking unnecessary risks because of her. You knew you were taking a risk. I don't know, Mr. Featherland. These things can't always be rationally explained. Not even when I've lived my whole life based on reason, on logic, almost every step calculated. So Natasha came and turned your whole life upside down. She's like that, isn't she? It's in her nature, yes. Poor thing can't help it. She's like a tornado. She usually takes everything with her. That's quite an apt metaphor. But I have to agree. Did she sweep you away, too? I don't know yet, madam. I'm clinging firmly to the ground. Do you know where Natasha came from? Naturally. The poor dear couldn't even deny it. That's all you know about her. And I That's the most exciting thing. Yes, I have. Multiple times putting my... It's rather... It is, Mr. Featherland, yes. Did it touch you deeply when she... Indeed. It did. Zavos is protective. It seems she's dedicating her... Have you kept in touch? Only occasionally, Mr. Featherland. She writes to me every few weeks, and very rarely we talk on the phone. But I haven't heard from her in weeks. The truth is I've started to worry about her. Did she give no sign of being in trouble? Never. No. Natasha's not the kind to talk about her feelings. Yeah, I've noticed that myself. When was the last time you saw her? Maybe around two months ago. There was a ball, attended by Ibn Wessler, his beautiful mate Natasha, and myself. Yes. Was she herself? Did you feel like she was afraid or worried about something? On the contrary, she was unrestrained, free, radiant. She was in love. Yes. What do you mean? You know Natasha loves on a different level than most Clawville women. Or most women in the wilderness, in fact. Maybe it's because of the Stovonian origins. Perhaps it's something else. So you didn't notice anything strange about her? Well, if anything could be called strange... I see. How did you feel when you learned Natasha was going to leave? Honestly? I was very hurt. I loved her as a daughter. How would you have felt? I couldn't say. And I still couldn't stop her, and you know why? Of course I do. Because you loved her. You've been in my shoes before, am I right, Detective? Yes, I can feel you have. This isn't about me, madam. Please stop changing the subject. I have felt betrayed on a certain level. Yes, and offended. And alone. Even amongst all my friends. Were you disappointed in her? Only in myself, Mr. Featherland. But I have a hunch you know this feeling very well. Yes, you're right. Well... Thank you for your time, madam. Any time, detective. Yes. Any time.
please, gentlemen, wait here a moment. I would like to show you something that could help you. Oh, that's excellent news. Thank you. We will wait. Do you trust her? Not in the slightest. Even her smile is fake. This woman wallowed in other animals' secrets until she became one, too. That's exactly how I feel. Anyway, now that we're here, we can take a better look around. Just what I was thinking. These books are here for a reason. They mean something. These books are here. These books are... These books are... Beautiful pieces. Yes. Hidden door. Who'd have thought? She is a legendary ex-spy. Well, this is something I've never understood. Why isn't a key good enough? I mean, you can take that with you, but riddles can be solved by anyone. I don't think many animals get to be in this room, Marty. And the other thing is, maybe she wanted us to find it. Exactly what I'm thinking. Who knows? Anyway, we're going in. This room is not like her at all. The other must have been for show. Marty, this is the reality. We're talking about a professional spy. A former spy. Still, if anyone knows how to mask a real face, it's her. Wait, you think this is who she really is? Cold, dark, and tiny. And full of secrets. <laughs> 